my story, what happened was at some point, this attempt institutionally and through a global economic plan to manage capitalist crisis or the, the, the tendency of global capitalism towards crisis, at some point they realized they couldn't do it anymore. But what was fascinating to me, or will always be fascinating to me, is the reaction of Washington policymakers in 1970, 71, 72, when they, before anybody else, could see the writing on the wall that the global plan that they had created was dead in the water. Now, let me ask you a question. Suppose that German policymakers found out that Germany was entering, was shifting from a surplus position to a deficit position, position, to a deficit position. What do you think Germany would do? I think they would go straight for austerity. They would go straight for cutting budgets, trying to, to, to uh, affect monetary and uh, fiscal policy in such a way as to reduce trade deficit, budget deficit, all deficits. Effectively, their economy would shrink, like the European economy is shrinking now, as a result of this mindset. What did the Americans do? When they realized that they have a deficit situation now, which was actually growing, they did something absolutely astonishingly remarkable. They decided that the solution to the deficit problem is to enhance their deficits, to make them grow, and to make them grow at an increasing rate. Now, that is an astonishing conception. And how am I um, backing up this story? Well, Paul Volcker was a young man who worked for Henry Kissinger before Henry Kissinger became uh, the foreign minister, secretary of state, of state for the United States, when he was still national security advisor. And Volcker was working for him, and Kissinger asked Volcker, who was a young banker, to come up with an idea as to how could American hegemony be expanded when the deficit is increasing. And Volcker wrote a three-page report, which actually I, I've read. It was very difficult to get, and you cannot find it anywhere, even on the internet. I have it in a manuscript form that was given to me by a friend in America some time ago, which is perhaps the most remarkable statement of the 20th century. Oh, well, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. In it, he said, well, if we can't remain hegemonic, that's the word he used. Huh? No, that's not a left-wing text, it's Volcker. If we can't re remain hegemonic by uh, handling, was the word he used, our surpluses, we should do it by handling other people's surpluses. And that's the global mineral. Effectively, what America did was to say, okay, well, we don't have a surplus anymore, so we can't recycle it, but we can recycle everybody else's surpluses. And retain our hegemonical position through that. And this is the very first time in human economic history, or history in general, that an empire is expanding its realm and its power and its strength and vitality by expanding its deficits. Usually, when an empire enters into deficit, it's the beginning of its decline, not in the case of the United States. So that is what I'm trying to, this is the story of the book. How did they conceptualize and how did they implement and how did they affect so successfully for so long between the early 1970s and 2008, a policy of enhancing their hegemony, of creating a very dynamic global capitalism with enormous imbalances, inequities, and human tragedies by expanding their deficits and having other people paying for them. Because that's what recycling other people's deficits means, uh, surpluses means.